Worship is a word that we use all the time that encompasses a lot of things. Romans 12.1 tells us, Present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Worship is about our whole lives. God wants all of us, every second of every day, surrendered to Him. But He also tells us some pretty specific ways that He wants us to worship Him. It's His desire for us to worship Him, and He lays out how we're supposed to do that. So one of the ways that we're told to worship God is through singing. Some of you might say, I don't like to sing, I'm not a good singer, but when we look at scripture, it doesn't tell us that just people that are good at singing should sing. The Bible says, sing, no matter who you are, sing unto the Lord a new song, sing unto the Lord all the earth. Psalm 149 says, sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of his faithful people. The assembly of his faithful people, that's us. We are the assembly, we are the church, and God tells us to sing, sing of who he is, in the assembly of his faithful people. He made us to praise him and he saved us to praise him. 1 Peter 2, 9 says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's holy possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Let's go back, it says, but you are a chosen people that you may declare the praises of him who called you. You were called and chosen so that you can declare his praises. Another version says so that you can proclaim his excellencies. Basically what that means is God chose us and saved us so that we would praise him, that we would talk about how great he is, that we would talk about what he's done in our lives. And proclaiming his excellencies isn't something that's just going to happen on the inside. A lot of people will say, well, I'm praising him in my heart, but God tells us to proclaim him his excellencies. And in order to do that, you have to open your mouth, whether that means you're just um, speaking of him, praising him on your own, telling people about what he's done in your life, or coming together with the church and praising him with one voice in worship. Um, Colossians 3.16 tells us again why we should be singing with the body of Christ and why we come together on Sundays or on the weekend and praise as the body of Christ. It says, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. When we sing, when we praise, we're not just doing it because God tells us to. That is part of it, but we are also encouraging the body of believers. We're encouraging the church. We're reminding ourselves who God is and what he's done in our lives and what he's promised to do in the future. Um, King David says in Psalm 119.11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. When we are singing, that Colossians verse says, the word of Christ is dwelling in you richly. When we're singing the truth of God's word, we're meditating on it. We're hiding it in our hearts, just like King David said, so that we may not sin against the Lord. You know how we teach little kids songs to help them remember their ABCs, or I learned a song when I was younger to help me remember the presidents. It's the same kind of thing. When we sing the word of God, we're hiding it in our hearts so that we'll be able to remember it, that we'll be able to recall it when struggles and temptations come. Probably the coolest thing about worship, one of the most incredible things about it is that when we come together and praise him as the church, as the body of Christ, we're getting a little glimpse of what heaven will look like. Revelation um, shows us that we're going to be singing, praising, and worshiping God for all eternity. Revelation 7, 9 says, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. That's us. We will be praising Him in heaven. Revelation 19, 6 and 7 says, Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Church, that is us. We are his bride. 
we have made ourselves ready to go and be with him in heaven. Jesus made a way for us to be with him. That's something to celebrate, and that's what we're going to be celebrating for all eternity, is that we get to be with God. That's what we get to do forever in heaven. But not only in heaven, because God has made a way for us to be a part of that right here, right now on earth. We get to gather together. We get to focus our hearts and our minds on God alone. Let everything else, every distraction, every trial, everything you've been going through in your home throughout the week, all of it just falls away for just a few moments when we can focus on just Him. Heaven is getting to spend eternity with the Lord, and He gives us a little taste of that here on earth when we just get to spend those few moments together as a church, as the body of Christ focusing on our Savior. If we're not taking part in that, we're missing out on an encounter with the Lord. We're missing out on a part of our relationship with Him that He so values, that He enjoys. He wants us to praise Him. So maybe you've never sang or praised God like these ways I've been talking about. Maybe you stand in church every weekend just counting down the minutes until the music is over. That's not what God wants from us. That's not what he wants for us. He wants us to praise him. He wants us to sing about his goodness, his faithfulness, his victory over the enemy. My challenge to you is to join in. You have the opportunity to be a part of something that really is a little taste of heaven on earth. And you have the opportunity to do that every weekend when we come together as a church. Psalm 147.1 says, It is pleasant and fitting to praise Him. It's fitting to praise Him because He deserves our praise, because He is worthy of it. And not only is He glorified in that, but the Bible says that it is pleasant for us to praise Him. I'm looking forward to this Saturday night. We're going to have a night of worship over on the property with the church. Um, right in the place where we trust that someday we'll be able to build a building. Um, we're going to be celebrating some of the things that we've seen God do here at The Rock, and we're going to look forward to what He's going to continue to do. Um, and I hope that you'll come out. I hope that you'll sing. I hope that you'll worship and praise Him and proclaim His excellencies with us.